What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is officially part two of my basement series. If you watched part one, uh, it was all about how to insulate your basement. Again, my wife and I built our house five years ago, and at that time, we did not have the money to finish our entire basement. Again, we got quotes from seventy-five to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I think I can do all of this uh, with the help in certain spots from contractors for about twenty thousand dollars all in. Yet to be seen. Today, we begin framing the basement. I'm actually tackling a, a complicated section today. It's going to be around the HVAC. There's a lot of angles. You know, there's going to be bulkhead here. Um, so it's actually pretty complicated. Before we dive right in, I did want to share with you just A, the tools that I have laid out that I think I'm going to need throughout this project. And then secondly, I have written down a list. I would tell you guys, when you get into your, your own projects, take a look at what you need to do that day and write down the order in which you want to get stuff done and start cranking that out. Two quick things right off the bat of the video. One is I have a newer house, but still you need to use pressure treated two by fours that'll be touching the concrete. So you can see over here, I did get for my $79 delivery fee, Home Depot, Home Depot delivered, you know, 200 and I don't know, 50 two by fours to me. And you can see here, these are my pressure treated two by fours that I will be putting at the base of my walls. Second thing is, I know I taught you guys in video number one for the insulation, how to use Excel, um, and you know, measure your basement, use Excel to kind of lay out your design list out the uh, materials that you're going to need, the insulation, the two by fours, the drywall, et cetera. Figuring out the number of two by fours you need is not overly complex. You measure, you know, your length, height of your basement. If I've got a 48 foot length basement, you take 48 times 12, and then you divide by 16. You divide by 16 because you have to put your two by four uh, studs 16 inches on center. Uh, which again, I will show you all that on video, but you, that's how you kind of measure the amount of you know, two by fours you're gonna need going vertically. Because my ceilings are about eight feet, seven inches, I ordered the 10 foot two by fours um, for the, the vertical studs. And I actually just kept it eight foot uh, two by fours for the top and bottom beam. It might be a little bit more inefficient. I hindsight should have ordered 10 to 12 foot two by fours for the top and bottom beam, but we'll make do. I'll have a couple extra two by fours kind of side by side where the walls begin and end. It's absolutely fine. It's only a couple bucks. All right. So before we dive in, now that you understand the basics there, I want to take you through the tools that I have laid out. Uh, the first thing is the ram set trigger shot. Uh, trigger shot. This is powder actuated. It means that you use 22 caliber, effectively they're blank bullets. Um, that is to put the two by four that you have at the base of your walls, that pressure treated two by four. That is to hammer nails into the concrete. And again, we are using the um, two and a half inch Ram set, one nail per trigger action, 22 caliber. You can see that's the, uh, the stage uh, four powder actuated. I'll call them bullets for lack of a better word. So you're going to use that. You only need to put maybe like, you know, two to four per baseboard. You do not need to go crazy using this thing. That's that. Um, always have a level because you never know we're going to need a level. This is really for drywalling this large T-square, but I think I'm going to need it to help kind of frame out just some drawing some lines on the floor. Um, I've got my nail gun here. I've got my compressor for the nail gun. We also have the uh, chalk line. So this is actually chalk for the chalk line. Here's my chalk line, 100, uh, I think it's a 100 meter chalk line. I've got my drill and my impact gun. These are gonna be critical to uh, toe nailing any two by fours as part of the framing where the walls are more complex. You cannot use a nail gun. You may have to use three inch screws. So we've got these ready to go. Got my battery charger. I've got eye protection, critical measuring tape. I've got drill bits to kind of pre-drill drill some holes. Critical, critical, I have a laser. Uh, I cannot stress to you enough how critical a laser is going to be and how much more it's gonna simplify this project for you. If without a laser, it's just, it's so much harder to get things square. It's harder to do it yourself without somebody else holding the tape measure and measuring and marking and measuring and marking. So highly recommend a laser. I've already started using it last night just to prep for today's project. Um, <clears throat> I do have, some drywall screws here, which we're not drywalling at all, but these will actually be critical for the bulkhead. I'll come back to that later in the video. And I have some three inch uh, decking screws for um, some of the walls where I'm going to have to toenail some of the two by fours in versus using my, my nail gun, just because again, some of these walls around the HVAC are going to be a bit quirky in terms of how I have to design them. Like I have to go around this HVAC pipe, so I can't run two by fours across the ceiling. I'm going to have to go up and then down and then up. So again, I, I will show all of that on video. 
Um, and then the last thing I have here is if you guys have, you know, nail guns, especially uh, compressor air nail guns, if you're going to need lubricating oil, usually you do about 10 drops per time you use it, you know, every few hours if you're using it at a ton. I've got another square. You just you never know where you're going to need that. I have some composite shims from Home Depot. These are nice because when you build your walls, because they are not load bearing, typically they're not exactly flush. They're usually about a quarter to an eighth of an inch uh, off the ceiling. So you can shim between the two by fours when you put the nails in the studs to hold your walls up and these just snap uh, really easily. And then I also have all of my collated framing nails. Um, again, I got the, uh, the galvanized nails. Um, by the way, each brand's nail gun, angle gun, needs certain types of degreed uh, nails. You might need a round head. So make sure you actually read the instructions with your particular nail gun. I had the DeWalt, so I got what I needed for my nail gun. All right, so that we've gone through some of the basics. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do today, according to my list that I laid out earlier, we're gonna crown some two by fours. So let me put you down. I'm gonna walk over to the two by fours and I'm gonna show you how to crown two by fours before you begin framing anything. Before you start framing the walls, you wanna go through a series of your two by fours that you think you're gonna need for a wall. Why is crowning important? If you don't get the crowns on the two by fours all facing the same way, when you go to frame your wall and then you drywall on top of that and certainly then when you paint it you're going to have uh wonky walls are going to be ripply because each of the each of the pieces of plywood right they're going to mold kind of to the two by four so if you don't have the crowns all facing the same way you're going to have a pretty uh warped looking wall that's why it's critical that you do uh, that you crown or mark the crowns on the two by fours before you start framing all right so what is a, a crown so this particular two by four we are looking to see where is the crown does it go like this long ways or does it go like this? Okay, because what you want to do is find that crown and then you want to have the crown. You, typically, you want to have it uh, facing out. You can see this crown is currently facing up, meaning the middle of the board is higher than the ends of the board. Okay, none of these two by fours are ever perfect. You can, if I flip it around here, you can see that now the middle is lower. Okay, meaning that when I say the middle's lower, I mean the board's going like this. Down in the middle, and then up, okay? So that's how you identify the crown. And what you typically want to do is, if the crown is on, let's say, this side, all right? I will go down and just mark the side that the crown is on. So then when I get all of my 2 by 4s done for a particular wall, I've marked all the crowns. I can have all the crowns facing the same way so that when I drive on my wall, uh, we are good to go. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, ask some questions below. I'm happy to respond. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and crowned some more of my two by fours. You can see here that I've marked with an X the side of the two by four. Again, and this is going long ways. I've marked on the side of the two by four where the crowns are, meaning that all of these two by fours when laid on their long side, all of these means the crown's going like this. Okay, I'll exaggerate it. Down, the, the, middle, the middle is higher than the end. When I frame my wall out, I want to have the crown or the bow, um, I'm going to have them all facing out to the side that I'm going to put the drywall on. That's just how I want to do it, all right? So that's done. The next thing we have to do actually is because of, I think by code, you have to build 30 inches off your furnace, okay? So 30 inches there, 30 here, 30 the other side. Because of this kind of bow of my HVAC right here, it's actually about 38 inches. But to be honest, I think I'd rather have more room than less room uh, in, the in the event we ever have to replace the furnace. It'll just give me an extra eight inches. Not a big deal. This part of the basement is not going to be heavily utilized anyway. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to build a wall that comes out here and then goes over that way. Okay, then I'll have like a door of a door. You come down the, uh, so this is my stairs right here, right? When you come down the stairs, I'll have a door. I might even put like a, a wine rack Murphy door. So it's like a hidden door uh, right there to get into this. What will be a closet here. But again, I'll have a wall coming off this side, turning, going in front, and then a wall going this way. All right. So instead of trying to deal with building this all out, you know, and notching that, I'm just going to build a wall straight from the ground up and out. Now, because this will all be hidden behind a bulkhead eventually, you have to figure out um, where your bulkhead's going to be. It might sound simple, but on long basements like this, despite the fact that these HVAC ducts look pretty, uh, pretty straight, pretty parallel with the walls, 
they're off by a little bit, right? So what you typically wanna do is measure off the, long, the longest wall uh, a distance, okay? And you're gonna mark, go down to the opposite end, measure off the same amount of distance, put a mark, and then you're gonna use your laser, right? I'll explain what that means, but the reason why I have to mess with my bulkhead now and know where it's going to go is because this wall is gonna come in, right? It's gonna go this way. But that means it's also gonna intersect the bulkhead right here, right? We'll have drywall coming down underneath all this. So I have to know where my bulkhead's going to go or it's gonna be wonky when I get all done. So before I get into the details of this too much, let me show you what I mean um, by measuring off from your longest wall, putting a mark and then using your laser to have a straight line throughout your entire basement where your bulkhead's going to go. Because ultimately the goal is to have a bulkhead, right? So you're gonna have drywall that's gonna be enclosing all of this, right? So 90 vertical and then flat, right? All of this will be behind the bulkhead. You wanna make sure that that bulkhead line is going straight and doesn't kind of bow out this way, or bow in this way. That's why lasers, lasers are so helpful as opposed to just measuring off every single stud, okay? So what have I done? So let me kind of put you guys down and I'll show you what I've done here. So what I've basically done is I've actually put a mark uh, about how far off my HVAC ducting I want the bulkhead to be, i.e. the frame and then the drywall. I'm about three inches off my HVAC and I've actually put a pencil mark there. So what I've done then, right, is I measured at the far wall over here, okay? And I come over here to my mark and I can see that I'm about 111 inches off my far wall, okay? So I make a mark there, measure off this wall, okay? 111 inches and you can see I put a mark right there, okay? straight line and then a V off of it just to indicate for sure where that mark is. Then what I did was I came down to the other end of the base. Now what I've done is I've picked a spot about three quarters of the way throughout uh, down my basement. Again, I've measured off this wall. I've come over and put a mark at 111, 111 inches. It's the inside mark that I messed up the first time. Once you've done that, the rest is easy, okay? All you have to do is get your laser level and line up your dots. So you probably already saw on the camera, but I had the laser going. So you can see my laser is right on my line right there. The laser is right on that line right there. And then you want to line up your line at the end of the basement, okay? So same thing here. I've got my laser and my two marks are lined up. I went back and double checked. There are, there are 111 inches from this far wall. That means my line is straight. Then the last thing I did just to get a bit of sanity, even though my bulkhead is not going to go down all the way to the very, very end of my basement, I also came way, way down here. Again, I measured off the far wall. I put a mark and I measured it and it was about 111 inches. It might have been off by an eighth or a quarter, but over the course of 55 feet, the length of my basement, you're not going to see that, okay? Um, we're talking like don't be off by like an inch. Um, so you can probably see the laser on camera, but it's actually, the ducting work was actually pretty good. You can see it's pretty much the same distance down the entire basement. So once you've lined up those dots with the laser, go back and mark every single stud, okay? So what I've done is I've marked every single stud. You wanna mark every single stud because that way when you build your bulkhead, it's gonna be square, it's gonna be true, and it's gonna be symmetrical with the rest of your basement so that you don't have any issues with the bulkhead not being perfectly straight and aligned with this far long wall when you build it out. That's good, I have a nice straight line out for my bulkhead. I have peace of mind. The next thing I have to do is actually build out just a portion of the bulkhead where it's gonna intersect my uh, utility closet here. So real quick before I jump right into the, uh, just the small portion of bulkhead that I have to build out, I actually need to sister some of these joints. I need to cut some two by fours, just screw them in between these studs. The second thing is right here, okay? I have an engineered uh, LVL beam and I'm sure many of the newer homes, you guys have this. It's, uh, these are very strong. I think they're actually stronger than steel I-beams. Um, I have one over there as well that I'll have to, uh, to deal with at some point. But essentially, I'm going to want to have that be the bottom of my drywall, okay? So what I mean is, when this bulkhead's built out, it's going to go down the side, it's going to go under, and it's going to be flush with the bottom of this, okay? So try to visualize that. You can see when I come up here, that I-beam sticks out just a little bit lower than all this ducting, okay? And I've measured, um, so however it may look on camera, it does stick out slightly lower than everything, so it's a safe bet. Um, in terms of you know using that as the bottom piece of my drywall what you want to do is you want to measure from the bottom of your studs okay any of these studs will work to the bottom of this board here now these are really one foot engineered i-beams 
Mine's actually like 11 and 7 eighths inch. You're gonna wanna have that measurement though because ultimately it's gonna impact how you build out uh, your bulkhead and how deep or how low your bulkhead's going to go. So I give you that as an FYI. Um, again, this will probably make more sense when I start framing out the bulkhead. Again, let me put you guys down. Let me sister these joints. Again, I'll show you that on camera quickly. Um, I'll, sister, I'll sister the joints first, but then we're gonna start building out the bulkhead. Okay, so what, I, what do I mean by sistering joints? Um, again, this is not load bearing or structural. This is just the whole drywall up, guys. Okay, so don't overcomplicate this. You're gonna get uh, your measurement between your studs and you're gonna cut two by fours to that length. Then you're gonna just toenail or put screws two on each side to hold it in place so that when, again, when you put your top two by four along the wall here, you have something to screw, okay, or nail into just to hold the wall up. So I'm going to measure between these two studs here and I can see that it is 14 and 5 eighths inch, okay? 14 and 5 eighths inch. Then I'm gonna walk over to my two by fours. Okay. I'm going to measure 14 and 5 eighths inch. I'm going to put a mark. I'm gonna get my square and I'm going to draw a straight line. And now I'm just simply going to take this two by four outside to my miter saw and I'm gonna cut that. All right, so we're out at the, uh, the miter saw. Um, again, you wanna make sure you have eye protection on for this. I don't care how many times you've done it, you just never know guys, okay? so. We're just gonna get our line set up with the saw here. All right, we got our two by four ready to go. All right, so you bring a two by four, two by four back inside and you can see you lay it this way, okay? So you just wanna have a nice flat surface. And again, my two by four, my long one for the top of my wall will be going through spanning multiple of these rafters here, okay? So as you can see, fits nice and snug. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get my drill. I'm gonna drill two holes this way at an angle, two holes this way at an angle, and then we're gonna put some three inch screws uh, to hold that in place. Again, it's not structural, you don't have to go crazy. Some professionals will not pre-drill the hole. I find that when you pre-drill the hole, uh, you keep that board from shifting at all. Um, the screws kind of go in, lined up really easy. So sometimes when you use the impact gun to screw that in, you might shift the board up a little bit. So me personally, I like to take the extra minute and a half, two minutes, pre-drill all four holes, then put the three-inch screws in, okay? Here we go. All right, so the first sistered uh, joint is in, so check it out. You can see here, nice, nice tight fit. Um, just, you know, two screws on each side. And uh, now when my wall goes up here, it's got something solid. I could probably hang on this right now and it's not gonna move. So it's got something solid for me to use my, uh, my framer, my nail gun and frame it into. So I'm gonna finish sistering up two more joints there. Uh, and then we're gonna get on to the bulkhead build out, which I can't wait to show you. You know, given my situation where I didn't wanna have to deal with kind of being cute with my framing around this bow out here, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm just gonna have my wall go in front of all that. So this is actually about 38 inches. So, you know, when you're thinking about your room though, you want it to be square. You want to have 90 degree corners. So you have to have multiple points of measurement, okay? Anchoring points in which you've measured off of, very similar to how I showed you about the bulkhead. Um, so I measured off, you know, the back of this 38, the front of it 38. I drew, you know, marks on the floor. Again, you can see where I've put my V's here, okay? So I know that in multiple spots, I have a nice parallel or you know, symmetric line uh, coming off the wall. Um, and again, it should be pretty 90 off this wall. Um, same in the front, I have measured out 30 inches. Um, and then what I've done is I've measured off my pink insulation foam out 64 inches and I made a mark there. So I know that when I have my two by four framing, I'm still 30 inches off the front of this. And if you come over here, do the same thing on both sides, right? You want it to be symmetrical, you want to have 90 degree corners. So again, I measured off the pink foam there, made a mark here, which is 64 inches. And then what I did was I just eyeballed um, off the pink foam and where ultimately I wanna have this wall be here. There's no right or wrong way to be doing this on this side. Um, so I put a mark again, I measure consistently off an anchoring point and I just put my marks everywhere um, along the way to make sure that I had a nice symmetrical room when I got done being built. Now, again, here's where the laser level comes into play. As you probably already noticed on camera, I now have lined up my laser with my 64 inch mark there. So I've lined it up right there. 
And then all the way down there, I have that two by four. You can see it's lined up with that 64 inch mark down there. Okay. And then the same down here, all of my marks on the floor, the laser is lined up with there. So I have a nice 90 here. I've done the same on that side. Okay. And as you'll notice, the laser is also great because it also lets you know that along the top here, all of my marks are lined up with the laser. So I have a pretty much a 3D laser confirmation that my room is going to be nice and straight, straight, and straight, okay? And then the same on that side. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the ceiling so I know where my two by four at the top of my frame wall has to go. So I'll put a mark there, put a mark on the I-beam. Um, so I have kind of a true following on the ceiling as well. So let me go back, let me mark this ceiling now. Um, and then we're going to get uh, working on the uh, on the bulkhead, okay? I will show you how I'm going to build the bulkhead out. I actually got it from another YouTube guy. Um, I think he does this, does this for a living, but it's the best way to build a bulkhead I have seen in any of the videos that I've been watching, so check this out. All right, so earlier I uh, I measured the uh, the length of my LVL engineered I-beam. I said it was 11 inches and like 7 eighths, so 11 and 7 eighths inches, okay? The reason why that matters, I have gone to Home Depot. This is 7 16 inch uh, chipboard. It's very cheap. It's like 12 or $13 a sheet. It's much cheaper than your $45 uh, for a four, uh, four by eight uh, sheet of plywood. Okay. So it's pretty cheap. So because I know the length or the depth rather of my beam is roughly one foot, I was able to go to Home Depot and have them rip sections of roughly one foot. It's, you know, again, 11 and seven eighths inch. Okay. That saved me a ton of time. Their machine is a lot faster than I could do it on my table saw or with my circular saw. So I have, uh, multiple rips of 11 and 7 eighths inch chipboard and then i also went and i bought a bunch of two by twos again these are pretty cheap but here's what we're going to do we are going to take our two by twos and we are going to get our drywall screws that i mentioned earlier and we are going to screw a two by two onto the top and onto the bottom okay we're going to start with the top and then we'll do the bottom once it's hung also these two by twos are horribly uneven um let me get off this you can see you can see there there's a big big bow at the end. What you want to do is try to find the straightest angle possible. So it looks like this way left and right is pretty straight. It's just got a, a nasty bow on the bottom. You want to put the bow facing down. So I said differently, you want to try to get flattest side possible to line up with the OSB board. And then the actual bow, you want to just have doing this. You can probably see my drill through the bottom there. It doesn't really matter because when we screw this on, Boom. These two by twos are incredibly flexible. So again, what matters is the left to right. You want it to line up nicely, okay, with the side of your OSB board. Nice, nice and flush along there. If it bows up at all, you know, in the middle. These two by twos are super flexible, so you can kind of manhandle them and typically do, you know, one, two, three, four, five uh, screws in there. And that'll be nice and steady, nice and sturdy rather. Once you get one side done, and I would do this on camera, once you get one side done, you are ready to hold it up to your previously marked from our laser, okay? All of our laser lines. You are ready to hold it up there and shoot a screw through the two by two. And that's gonna become the outside of your bulkhead. It makes things super easy. One last thing when you're making these, uh, you typically wanna go in, these are eight foot uh, sheets of plywood, eight foot two by fours. You typically wanna go in about three inches, make a mark. And I'm going to go outside in my miter saw and I'm going to cut this off. That's because when you get this one lined up on the ceiling, you're going to have another one the whole way down, you know, all of your duct into your bulkhead. You want to have a way to connect them. So my next uh, bulkhead build out like this, right? I'm going to have the opposite where I'm going to have, you know, the three, I'm going to have my OSB kind of come to here, but it's going to, I want to have the two by two stick out three inches so I can screw this one to this one, which is attached to the OSB board that'll be over here. Hopefully that makes sense, but if not, again, you'll see it on camera. All right, so I went outside um, and I cut the two by two. Now we're gonna take our number six uh, by one and one and five eighths inch uh, coarse thread drywall screws. Uh, these work pretty well. And again, this is not really structural. It's just to uh, hold some plywood. You can see here now that this is lined up and it's flush with my other end, but you can see it's three inches short right there, okay? Again, the reason why it's three inches short is the next section of my bulkhead will be built built the same way, but as opposed to my two by two being three inches too short on one side, it's gonna stick out three inches so that I can screw all of these sections together, all right? 
So let's take our screws, let's bolt, let's bolt this thing down. All right, five screws, super, super fast, super easy. As you can see now, we've got a nice uh, flush, okay, surface there. You can probably notice there is a now bow, okay, in the OSB because it took the form of the two by two. Doesn't matter, okay? This whole thing is so flexible that when I start to put it up and line it up with my marks from our laser earlier, you can just, again, you can manhandle it, right? Put one screw in at the end, just work your way down, uh, pushing it along the way, get it lined up with your lines, no problem. Voila. Once you've got one screw in, just walk down the line doing the rest. All right, so in a matter of minutes, our very first uh, bulk head support is in. Check it out. So again, I wound up putting four uh, three-inch screws in the, uh, the two by two to support it. But again, this is why I like this guy. So um, it was a bit kind of bowed, like we said, but because this is so flexible, I put one at the end. As you can see, hopefully, there's our line right there, okay? And you walk down here, I got another screw. There's our line right there. Again, I had to push it from the outside. So I had to push it in to kind of get the two by two to line up with the line. I put one there, walk down here. You can see there's our line, okay? And then the very last section right here, there's another screw and there is our line, okay? Another really important thing about this is it's uh, great that it's, it's, it's pretty rigid. It's still got a little bit of movement in this way. Now this will all be bolted down to other cross members at some point and drywall, okay? I have a two by two uh, going along the bottom here as well to kind of bolt to the uh, drywall. I'll have another one of these things here. I'll have another one going down here. But the reason why these are great is, okay, you can push them in a little bit when you tie them all down. And what's nice about that is when you put your corner bead on your drywall, so every piece of drywall, uh, every corner of your house is what's called corner bead, all right? It's a metal strip. It's a 90 degree angle. It makes perfect 90 degrees in your corners. But when you put those on, there's a lot of mud or spackle that you have to do to hide that. And what can happen is it can cause a buildup so your walls kind of go like this as opposed to being the 90, like this, which are real pretty, which is what you want to see. So what we can do is before we finalize this bulkhead and can strap it all down with some other supports going across the cross members here, we can kind of pull this in ever so slightly so that when you put that, that spackle, that mud back on, it winds up with a perfect 90 degree. So, all right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add, just while I'm at it, the two by two section at the bottom here. Again, I'm going to cut it three inches short so that my next section of this, I'll have my three, three, two by two rather, three inches sticking out. It'll bolt down to this board, the top and bottom. That's how you sister or join these uh, bulkhead supports so that you have a nice, straight, strong, bulkhead uh, that's not going to move throughout your project. All right, so I have to put that two by two on, and then we get actually two by four framing our first wall, which is going to be this wall right here. All right, so I'm all done with the, uh, the base of the bulkhead framing. I got the two by two on, so you'll see here that I've gotten the two by two attached to the bottom now. You'll also probably notice I built out a couple other just bulkhead supports there, there, there and there. Um, again, this is actually really more so for the wall that I'm going to build than it is about the drywall, but it'll also support the drywall. Um, so my wall is going to come right along. You can kind of see where I've marked it on the, uh, the beam here. So I'm going to have a two by four plate that runs all down there. And I want it to have somewhere to anchor that top beam into. So these are serving two purposes. They're serving to, uh, anchor my wall and they'll also you know support any of the drywall that comes out um you know in this area here now obviously i will have to make more of these to put in here and there you know etc uh to get give my drywall some more support um while the one and five eighths fiberglass reinforced drywall can span about 36 inches you know there are certain areas like you know from that beam to like way over here that i would just have to have something running in the middle here just to give some added support. So that's all done. Now we're on to two by four framing. So we'll one more time. I did run my laser. I checked everything that this lined up, 
this lined up. I checked that my floor is lined up with laser. I checked that this line going across right here in the beam, I marked it lined up level. And then I came over here with my laser as well for my uh, 64 inch mark. And the rest of my marks there, ran the laser up here and marked off on these beams here. You know, so everything is square and ready to go. And I've actually even measured twice. So you cut once, measure twice, cut once. That's what grandpa taught us. That's what we're going to do. So the first beams I have to cut, I'm actually going to build this wall in place uh, just because there's some nooks here I got to cut around and I just don't want to have to deal with trying to tip it up and, you know, that HVAC line getting in the way. So I measured off of this wall, confirmed it is 64 inches. So again, this pressure treated wood here, this will go on the floor. This is the bottom plate. I've measured 64 inches and made a mark uh, right there on this one. And similarly for the top board, I've measured 64 inches right there. So I'm going to take these out to the miter saw. I'm going to get these cut and I'll be right back. Okay, so we got the two by fours cut. We're back inside now. Again, my uh, pressure treated board will go along the concrete. Um, it is not bolted down yet or, or anchored down yet. It's just laying there. Um, but what we have to do before we start doing any of this right now is laying out uh, our studs at 16 inches on center. I know that's probably a theme. If you're doing this, you've heard it before, um, but it's not always clear what that means. What it means is uh, every 16 inches is where the center of your stud is going to go. So let me put you in the uh, tripod here and I'll show you on camera real quick. If you just take your measuring tape and you start at the end, you put a mark at every 16 inches. So I have a mark at 16 there, a mark at 32, a mark at 48, and a mark at 60, okay? Because this is obviously a short beam. That is where the center of your two by four is going to go. So at my 16 inch mark, I draw an X. I measure out three quarters of an inch right and three quarters of an inch left of that because two by fours are actually only one and a half inches thick. So when you take three quarters of an inch right and left and draw straight lines there, that's kind of how if you can visualize it where your two by four is going to go, okay? So let me zoom in and show you what I mean here. So you'll see right there that X is 16 inches, but those straight lines on either side that's meant to represent um, the width of your two by four that you'll be anchoring there at some point. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, you have just every 16 inches, you draw a line. That's the center of your beam. Go right and left three quarters of an inch. That's how you lay out 16 inches on center. Okay, so I have the uh, top beam in place. Again, the bottom, the bottom beam is just gonna stay unanchored to the floor until I'm done framing the wall. The last thing I want to do is put concrete anchors into my concrete foundation and then, and then realize the wall's not true or something. So, so you can see here, I've got the top beam anchored. Uh, it turned out, I'm glad I sistered the joint right there because it just gives me another screw, some more reinforcement there. Um, I did cut out for the HVAC line. Again, this is not a load bearing wall. And with those three screws, that section right there is rock solid. Um, so the Next thing we're doing is we have to build a wall in place, which is not ideal. It is the longest way to frame a basement. My outside walls, meaning you know, the walls along that like that, I will build on the floor with my nail gun and just you know tip them up. It'd be super easy, super fast. This uh, section I want to build in place just because I want it to be precise. There's a lot of things to go around. So what you have to do here is you count each year of your, of your markings. One, two, three, four, five. I guess it's actually six because the very end I'll have another stud. So there'll be six studs um, totally. So what you have to do is honestly, it seems simple, but you just need to measure from the top to the bottom. So I measured all of mine already. It's about 99 and a half inches there, slightly less. And down here it's 99 and a half, slightly more. So about of a 16th of, 16th of an inch uh, minus and plus on either side. So pretty symmetrical. Um, so I'm going to cut out my six boards uh, precisely then i will i will put them up there and then we'll do what's called toenailing uh, the boards into my top and bottom beam so my very first beam right here i have measured uh, 99 and a half drawn a line with my, my square here and now we will go out to the miter saw and we'll chop that and we'll get it into place all right so super exciting we have our first real wall in place um so i have cut all of my two by fours I measured each of them individually. Uh, bottom plate is still not anchored down and uh, these two by fours are not uh, toenailed in to the bottom or top plate yet other than one, which I'll show you. But as you can see, the cuts were pretty perfect. They fit um, snug, but not too snug. So they're staying in place right now. So first wall in place. Now, 
Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to toenail these in place. I am going to use three inch screws for these. Um, so I've done two already, but for instance, uh, this is toenailing. You kind of start straight and then you kind of bend the screw down and then push up. Okay. Uh, for these other beams that aren't on the end against the wall, like that one, I'm going to do two in one side and then one in the other in the middle for the top and the bottom. Again, these walls just need to hold drywall. They are not supporting the house. That's why we have these I-beams. You know, once I get all of these, um, all of these toenailed in, the only thing left to do is just check level on the wall, make sure that my markings on the floor for my laser are still lined up. Again, as you can see here, the front of this two by four, okay? There's a mark there. There's a mark right there. There's a mark right there, okay? So right now the two by four is exactly where it needs to be for us to shoot the concrete anchors into the floor. Then you will have one officially completed wall. So I'm going to uh, put you guys in the tripod, probably do a quick time lapse on me toenailing these in, and then we'll check level. And then it should be time to use the uh, ram set trigger shot, which I'm super excited about. Um, you know, make sure you have ear protection for that though, because it's like a gun going off, it is loud. Before we get cranking on the toenailing, uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out to you. We talked about crowning in the first video or earlier in this video, right? So you'll notice all of where I put X's on these boards, okay? All of them, there's one here. All of them are on the outside. They're all facing the same way, which means like it's hard to see on camera, okay? But it means that all of these boards had a slight, this, this kind of bend to them, okay? But now because they're all facing the same way, it'll be less visible to the eye. You're not gonna have some wonky rippling effect um, from the two by fours going in and out. You want to make sure you have your impact gun for toenailing or any screwing. Um, it makes a world of difference. And again, when you are going to toenail something, you want to start about an inch and a quarter up. I eyeball it. You start the screw in straight like this, okay? And then once it's about a quarter of an inch in, you kind of bend it up, use a little bit of muscle, and then you push it through the rest of the way uh, with your impact drill, okay? All right, so my first wall is like 99% done. Super excited, it turned out really well. Um, all of these studs now are in fact toenailed in, anchored at the top, the bottom. All we have left to do is just anchor the, uh, the pressure treated two by four at the bottom, the bottom plate into the concrete. We're gonna do that next, but before I do, you will recall how often I used my laser level uh, throughout this first wall, just in general for prepping from the bulkhead, you know, to this wall, to the front wall, to the side wall, go all going around the HVAC. Let me show you the benefit of that. So I got my big level here when I got done this wall. Look how perfect that is. I mean, you really can't, <laughs> you, don't, you don't get better than that, uh, certainly manually uh, measuring. So I'm really excited about how true and how uh, straight the wall turned out here. So the last thing we have left to do right now is get our ram, sh uh, ram shot, our ram set rather, trigger shot. So I'm gonna get this ready. I'm gonna put you guys down, then I'll walk you through that. All right, so I think it's the last thing uh, for today. I will pick up framing probably tomorrow. Uh, first and foremost, ear protection. So from Home Depot, I got just the uh, squishy earplugs. If you put these in your ears right, they actually block out like 32 decibels. These are like $4 for a pack, I think of like 10 pairs or 20 individuals. So I think I'm gonna put just two anchors. This is a very short wall. So I'm gonna put an anchor on each end of the concrete. Uh, to use these, all right, you pull them apart, you grip and pull. Like that, pull down on the, uh, the barrel right here. You put the nail in this end, like so. And then when you're ready, you put the uh, 22 caliber round, uh, the fat side up, obviously, for those of you that have never used uh, a bullet before. But that goes in the hole right there. Close this up. You walk over to the wood. You brace this and squeeze the trigger, okay? And that puts this anchor into the concrete. Okay, well, it is uh, later in the day. I bought the wrong... Uh, <laughs> 
22 caliber uh, powder actuated uh, bullets here for the, uh, the ram set. So I had to get this particular kind. Make sure you guys read the instructions. Lesson learned. All right, that being said, let's shoot our first anchor into the concrete. Just like that, anchor set in the concrete. This thing's not going anywhere. This wall is officially done. I'm going to put one more in on the other side, but it's uh, one, one wall down, about you know 30 more to go. All right, we are back. It is a new day. Time to keep framing. If you guys recall from last night, uh, we got this wall completely done here, all anchored at the top. I have the concrete anchors in. We've gotten the bulkhead, uh, the first part of it installed, but we did use our laser and to get all of our marks, all of our studs, the whole way down the basement so that we know that this bulkhead will be parallel uh, with the longest wall. It'll be flush and when it's drywalled, it's going to look like a professional did it. Um, we've also installed <clears throat> so some reinforcements along here, which will serve to support the top stud for the wall that goes along here, plus the front part of these, you know, where it sticks out uh, further than my wall bill here. That'll be an anchor for some drywall. We will install more of these uh, between the ducting as I go. So today, <clears throat> we're going to build the opposite wall to this one on the other side of the basement. Last night, I went ahead and measured and cut everything. Um, so I've gotten my <clears throat> all of my 2 by 4s cut for the wall over there. Um, everything is crowned, okay, like we talked about in the previous video. So actually today we're going to try to build this wall on the floor and tip it up into place. I've got my pneumatic DeWalt uh, framing nail gun here all set up. I already put oil uh, in, the, in the lubricating hole here before I put the, hooked on the airline. So that's ready to rock and roll. Um, Compressor is ready to rock and roll. One thing, if you've never used a nail gun before, make sure you look at your uh, pressure regulator. Uh, right now mine's at 140 PSI. I will probably turn that down to you know about 100 PSI for my first couple nails and see how it goes. You need to read the instructions on your particular nail gun because these do have working limits and range limits. So if you put 150 PSI through a tool that's rated for 100 PSI, you might blow it up, it's unsafe. Also, make sure you wear eye protection while doing this, you never know what could happen. So again, read your instructions. Um, with that, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Let me put you guys in the tripod and let's bang out this wall. All right, so typically when you build a wall on the fl floor like that and then tip it up, you actually want to cut uh, the entire wall length, okay, to be about a quarter of an inch, all right, to a third of an inch uh, off the top of those. And that's because when you tip a wall up, okay, because of the angles, if the wall is the, the perfect height, it's going to hit, okay, the post. You're never going to get the wall up all the way. You're going to be either that, either that or you're going to be hammering the heck out of it uh, with a mallet or something. So... Um, the other option you can do, though, and what I'm doing right now is I actually did cut my wall within about an eighth, eighth of an inch uh, from the top, and I'll put a shim for the rest. But if you tip a wall up so it goes in between the joists like I'm doing here, then you can get one corner in and just pivot the whole wall. Now it's going to rub a little bit. You're going to want to get your mallet. Um, but that's one way to build a wall pretty much right on height without having to worry about it not coming up. Hopefully that makes sense, but I wanna put you guys down and knock this wall out real quick, get it into place. All right, the wall's in place. That was a lot easier than building it in place. Um, I don't know which method I prefer, honestly. I think you can be a lot more precise when you build it in place, but if time's of the essence, uh, build it on the floor, you know, a third of an inch short, tip it up and you should be good to go. Um, one thing I did not have on my tool shelf earlier was a rubber mallet. Definitely recommend you guys have this. Um, you don't wanna be beating the wood with like a, a nail hammer. The rubber mallet, um, it's a lot heavier, it's weighted, it moves us a lot easier. All right, the last thing we have to do is just anchor at the top and anchor at the bottom. Don't forget, eye protection, ear protection, whenever you're using any pneumatic tool, whether it's you know air pneumatic or powder actuated in the case of the concrete anchors. Um, I know I didn't have eye protection on earlier, but you wanna always make sure you have ears and eyes. Don't wanna get hit in the eyes, guys. Don't wanna get hit in the eyes. All right, and just like that, second wall down. One to the uh, the wall in front of the HVAC utility cabinet here. Let's get cranking on that. You can see like I have the mark, uh, where is it? Right there. So this will be built from here over. So the two by fours will run like this all the way down. Now, I'm gonna build this wall in place just because I don't wanna be using any pneumatic uh, nail guns uh, go up into these two by twos. I just don't want to split the wood. So I'm probably going to pre-drill those and use screws. And also one thing to think about guys, when you're building out closets like this, 
is that you're gonna have drywall, obviously on this side of this wall, okay? You're also gonna have a flat piece of drywall going across here to your bulkhead, and then drywall going down. So my wall for now, I'm gonna build at height, just flat the whole way across. It'll be the same thing on that side when I get that bulkhead piece in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come back once this other wall is in place like this. And on top of here, just so I have a surface to mount my drywall to, I can just cut a two by four and put it up there like that and screw it into my existing bulkhead. And then what I can do is I can tie this into the wall down here and tie this wall into this. So it'll all be one solid system. So don't, uh, that's the nice thing about working with wood. Don't overthink what you're doing. Obviously you want to know what your layout's going to be. You want to know what your design's going to be. You want to keep things true and straight, but Again, I don't have to build like a piece up and then down. I can just build my wall flat for now, okay, with its uprights, and then come back on either side and fill something in here to anchor, you know, this wall with this, with this wall, so it's all tied and tight. So we won't get drywall cracks going forward. All right, so this wall should be pretty quick. Just measure the distance between there and there. I already did that and marked this board. Uh, we'll do the same at the top up here, okay? We're gonna go miter those, we're gonna bolt it down, then we're gonna build our uprights, all right? So let me put you guys down, let's get cranking on that. Also, when you're working with a 12 feet, uh, 12 foot two by four like this, you've got a ladder, some blocks of wood. It's a nice helping hand, uh, especially when you have to cut off just a little bit at the bottom, right? If you don't have it uh, level, it'll wanna tip up on you. Your, your cut's not gonna be flush. So just keep that in mind, guys. <laughs> All right, so I have both pieces of wood uh, cut to length right now from the top and bottom. I've crowned them, so they're both crowns are facing out right now. Um, I'm going to go crown on my studs here next, but before we get to that, the first thing we're going to do is mark 16 inch on center on both of these so that we have a guide when we go to build our posts in place. Here we go. By the way, um, most tape measures have a red mark where the 16 on center is. So 16, they'll have one at 32, they'll have one at 48, so on and so forth. For, for those of us like me that are bad at math, a um, little helpful trick. Most tape measures will have that for you. All right, once we've done that on one board, all you have to do is get your speed square and just transpose it to the next board, all right? Real fast, only measure once then on, on uh, you have to measure for one board, line them up, same distance, same length, just pull the marks on both boards, here we go. All right, um, so we're about to hang the top beam up here right now. And again, if you're by yourself, your ladder and some blocks are your best friend because now I can put my, I can rest one end, one end of the two by four up on top of that while I am down here uh, putting up the screws and uh, pre-drilling. So again, when you're drilling into, uh, when you're putting three inch screws into the, the two by twos, I would recommend pre-drilling. It'll just help prevent cracking. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the uh, two by four up against this, and I'm just gonna pre-drill and then put a screw in. So just try not to crack the board. So And then once you have your first uh, few screws in, you can get rid of the, uh, if we've gotten our first three or four screws in here, you can get rid of ladder, that board's not going anywhere. You just finish knocking out your last couple screws. All right, so now we're gonna knock out the studs. The first thing I'm doing is crowning my, uh, my two by fours by 10 feet long. So I've gone through here and I've gotten uh, some of my studs already laid out, you know, again, X marks the spot for the side that has the crown. Um, I will I will tell you in case those of you are, that are doing this, you have some two by fours where there's not an obvious crown. Some of my boards have been almost perfect. Um, it's very rare, but.
but just do your best. Um, you want to make sure that the obvious crowns are all facing the same way, okay? So that's the most important thing. But every wall, don't forget the crown first. That's why I write down a list of things I want to get done that day because I always remind myself, crown, crown, crown. You don't want to have wavy walls when you put your drywall on. All right, let's cut our studs. Let's get them into place. Then let's uh, put some screws in them to hold them, and then we'll be done. One more wall. Okay, our HVAC closet is officially framed in. So check it out. Again, we did this wall first. We had to kind of cut around that AC line there, but we sistered some joints in between the studs in the basement just to give something to anchor into. Everything's 16 inch on center. All of my crowns are facing the outsides. They're all facing the same way, so my drywall uh, won't be wavy when I put it up. Everything's been anchored down into the concrete, okay? We've got, again, the reinforcements we hung from the ceiling just to give our top board some areas to anchor into. Um, and then the same on this side, this wall is all anchored in and uh, kind of at some point, probably this week, I'll come back and I'll do uh, the bulkhead layout, but I kind of want the HVAC guy to come finish what he has to do just to make sure I don't have to do anything squirrely with the, uh, with the bulkhead. Now, one thing we will come back at some point is I will come back and I will cut in a door here. So again, I recommend don't trying to frame in your door. It's just going to take too much time and rather just, you know, if I wind up wasting seven or eight dollars in wood, so be it. But I will eventually frame something in here. I might do like a wine rack. It actually is a Murphy door, so it'll open. Maybe some glass doors in front of the wine rack. You know, I think that'll be pretty cool. Uh, you can get the electrician to you know, run some LED light strips in there so it kind of lights up like, you know, fancy cabinets in the kitchen. So that should be, should be pretty cool. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to frame out this wall. Uh, we're going to frame out this wall. And then that might be calling it a day. At that point, um, again, I'm not going to get all that on camera. I've showed you how to frame a wall. You can either frame or build them in place, which is largely what I did for the HVAC cabinets or the closet, rather, just because there's so many kind of angles and cuts you had, I, had, I have to deal with. Or alternatively, you can, again, build it on the floor like I showed you uh, with this wall, and then you can, you can tip it up into place, okay? Now, again, if you are going to tip it up into place, if you build it on the floor with your nail gun, then tip it up into place. Don't forget... The top, you have to take off like a third to a quarter or a quarter to a third of an inch because just based on the geometry of the two by fours, when you tip it up, it'll hit the studs, all right? And you'll be hammering and hammering and hammering. And you can actually hurt, you know, a tile floor above you or a wood floor. You can actually start to like lift up your uh, your beams there, your joists, okay? And you don't want to do that. So again, you got to cut it about a third of an inch short. Um, you'll wind up, you know, tipping it up and then putting shims at the top. Again, these are not load bearing walls. It's just a whole drywall, okay? Don't forget that. Plus, because we have, uh, you know, stuff like this cross member here holding up the HVAC uh, ducting, I'm actually going to get one by three furring strips, and I'm going to strip or fur furring strip my entire ceiling anyway. So we're going to lose about three quarters of an inch off the ceiling. So even if the top of your, you know, two by four walls are, again, a third of an inch below the stud, and you can put a shim up there to kind of get it tight, it's not going to matter. Okay, you're never going to see it. Your drywall is never even going to go there because I'm going to wind up furring uh, the ceiling down again with one by threes and i think you should all look at your ceiling and make sure that you're thinking about doing that highly highly recommended to always furring strip your ceiling in the basement okay so with that being said i'm going to put you guys down i'm going to get cranking off camera i'm going to try to knock out this wall I'll try to knock out this wall and again i think that'll be calling it a day for me um i'll try to get the more complicated uh framing areas on camera for this video with the basic walls that i just you know again frame and just sit up i'm not going to get any more of that on video i think you guys can hopefully understand that at this point by now right so uh if you guys are enjoying this please thumb up please subscribe please comment below i would really appreciate the support this is a lot of work on my time uh, again I do, I do not do this for a living this is just a hobby of mine trying to save some money and trying to share my uh my journey with you all out there right so Thanks again. Um, let's get cranking, guys. Okay, so quick update. Um, we've gotten, as you guys know, the HVAC uh, kind of uh, utility cabinet or closet 
rocked and rolled there. That's all framed out. We have this wall done right now. Uh, we have this whole entire wall right here. All these are built on the floor with my pneumatic air gun and then tipped up into place. Uh, you know, the use of a little bit of a sledgehammer kind of gets them in place. But like I said, you always want to cut about a quarter to a third of an inch shorter um, so that you don't have to deal with that. Then you shim the top. Now, I'm bringing the camera back in here because we have a bit of a odd situation here that I imagine many people will run into something similar and want to know, you know, how do we frame around that? So as you can see here, I have a nook first off, ignore the beam, we'll come back to that. We have a nook, a wall there. I'm probably going to go just past uh, that, come straight out to the pole. And then on the front of this beam will be like the finished wall and where the wells and everything behind the beam would just be again, kind of like the HVAC closet where, we'll, excuse me, it'll be for storage. Um, and anything else like that, but I'm not going to have the well, you know, in the, uh, the finished part of the basement. So again, we'll have a wall just kind of like from this pole over everything behind that will just be kind of, as you see it now with the insulation. So why I wanted to bring the camera back here is because it's a bit of a tricky, uh, framing situation going around this LVL beam here. So you'll see that I have a very small section right there that I have to kind of frame around, um, and then come down now. Fortunately, the bottom plate, that's easy. That's going to be what it is. But what I'm thinking right now is up here for my top plate, I'm going to have a, a seven inch top plate. So from the beam to the outside of you know this wall, the seven inches, okay? Now coming down off of that, I'm going to have my kind of main outside beam here, okay? And then I'm going to have another beam flush and probably screwed into the... Uh, the I beam here. So I'm going to have two beams going very close together down to the, the bottom plate down there. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have a cross member right here to sister this inside beam with another beam over here on the other side of this, because ultimately up here, you want to make sure you have a solid surface to mount drywall to. Okay. So I'm going to have one, two, probably three. I might just jump over to the end four beams. Okay. The reason why I'm showing you this is you have to think about the order in which you want to build this. I will probably build some of this on the floor and then actually finish it in place. Um, and here's why. So for me to, this is a very small area. I'm not gonna be able to fit my impact gun between my, uh, my studs here to sister this with this beam. So I actually have to put this beam on the bottom plate first, sister it with screws or nails, Another, uh, whatever this is, you know, three and a half to four or five inches beam going across. Then this beam here with nails going that side to sister it. So I'm going to have to build this beam, this cross member and this beam first uh, before I can finish the rest of this particular framed out nook or wall, whatever you want to call it. So always kind of think about the order in which you want to do things. Because if I had just started building this either in place or on the floor from like the left to the right, for instance, I would have gotten myself in a situation where I could, I was able to put my beams up but I wouldn't have been able to sister those joints very easily. Um, and it may not have mattered ultimately, but I want this to be as solid as possible. So just food for thought. I'll show you guys this when it's all done. Okay, so let me show you what I mean right now. So uh, we had the bottom plate sitting on the floor. I've measured up from that. It's uh, 101 inches up to the rafters. I take an inch and a half off of that, right, to get back to the length of my studs, right, because my top two by four is an inch and a half thick. So you have to account for that, right? So if it's 101 inches total to the top, off of the bottom base plate, right? You still have one and a half inch for the top plate you have to take off, so 99 and a half inches. So I have cut two studs to 99 and a half inches. They were sitting on the bottom plate right now, okay? I know it's not in the camera view, but trust me, they're sitting on top of the bottom two by four, okay? And I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit these in here like this, all right? So again, I want these to be flush with the LVL beam, and I plan on putting the two by four right in the middle of these two uh, and then sistering it with, with screws on either side, okay? So what I have to do now is I want to mark my bottom plate. So I'm going to get my level, okay? And I'm going to put it on these two by fours. And I'm going to adjust them until I get to level. All right, and then once you get these level, you're going to put marks on either side of it at the bottom of the base plate, okay? So I'm going to go down here with my pencil. And I'm going to mark. So let me, uh, get, let me pull the camera over here and I'll show you. So I got my one uh, stud perfectly uh, level, and I came down here on either side. I marked it, okay? <laughs> and why I'm doing that is because I'm going to take all this down, then I'm going to get my pneumatic uh, air nail gun, 
and I want to put those particular two, uh, two studs in place, okay? So I have both of these studs marked at the bottom right now. The other thing that I'm going to do while they're sitting up here is I'm going to measure in between them so I can go over to the miter saw and cut a two by four piece to go in the middle. So we have about five and three eighths inch. So I'm going to cut a five and three eighths inch piece of two by four to put in there and uh, same as these two together, okay? Okay, so the studs are so loose, they're not bolted down to anything. I got my five and three eighths inch piece of two by four here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my handy dandy impact on, and I'm actually going to screw this onto both uh, uh, two by fours right now. So now you'll see here that I have this all hooked in together. I can put screws on either side into the I-beam. And this ultimately serves two purposes. One is to tie in both sides of this wall, but it also provides a surface now to bolt uh, drywall, the drywall edge to. So um, we're gonna finish wrapping this up. I'll show you again all the rest of the steps that I'm gonna do here because uh, that was the hardest part, but it's a, it is a bit quirky. Okay, so um, this is the last thing we're gonna do tonight. I'm gonna finish this wall. I'm gonna show you guys everything on camera again. Um, again, coming back over to where my two by fours just were, I did measure uh, the distance for the top beam up there, and I've already cut that out. And also, because this is an inside corner, we're going to have to do a California corner. So for those of you that haven't noticed that or haven't um, thought about that yet, always think about where is my drywall going to screw into, okay? When you get to an inside corner, you have to have what we call a California corner so that you have something to mate your drywall to. In this case, it's where you put a two by four long way so it was this wall okay i had a stud going like this back there that you can see okay then you also put a two by four going this way so your sheet of drywall has something nice and flush to screw down to okay and then you ultimately screw this beam to this beam and make it nice and solid okay <clears throat> that's not going anywhere it's kind of the same way that you tie in walls together so like this is a good example here if I noticed that I have two two by fours there, that's because I had uh, my two by fours weren't long enough to span the entire width of this wall. So what you do is you just put your wall side by side. And again, I just put, um, you know, a couple screws, you know, one, two, three screws, and it ties the wall together nicely. So uh, make sure you're thinking about your drywall while you're framing. Always think about where is your drywall going to screw into. For the most part, it's not that complex. Outside corners, you just do what we were doing for the HVAC utility closet inside corners. You need the California corner, okay? So I'm gonna put you guys down. I'm going to assemble this uh, small wall right here. I'm gonna show you everything on camera just so it makes sense. Okay, I've got the wall laid down on the floor, just kind of nailed it together. But you can see here's how it looks. I've got, you know, the two by four on the outside that I had the California corner, the two by four going down. So my drywall will have something uh, to screw into. And then you can see up here on my other end, there is where to go around the I-beam when I tilt it up. There's a seven inch or the uh, seven inch section at the top that conjoins them. There's where I've sistered it. And then there's a top piece of the other side. So again, I'm gonna put you guys down and let's put this together. almost forgot uh, you also want to tie in this two by four with this one so before I put this up uh, against the wall you want to do it while it's on the ground so I'm just gonna put three screws in I prefer screws over nails for this just to keep it nice and solid all right now that that's done let's tip it up hopefully it fits like a glove you might need to give it a little bit of persuasion with the old mallet Okay, and it turned out to be a little snug. I had to really whack it with the uh, sledgehammer, but that's okay. Uh, it wasn't too tight. So once I got it up there, we were good to go. So as you can see here, that's all in place now. Again, here's the California corner, right? So now when my drywall piece comes over, it's got a piece to screw onto here before my other 2x4 wall goes this way. Hopefully that makes sense. Got the beam up there. You have a small little section there for wires to pass through. Uh, make sure that you are thinking about electricity and what, where you currently have wires. If I had tried to shove it up there without putting the little notch for the wires, I would have probably ripped them apart. Um, so now all we have left to do is 
put some screws into the LVL beam on either side. Um, and then also I'm gonna put some screws from this wall into this piece here, just to tie these two in together and then just put the cement anchors in. And then we are done for the day. We got all of this done today. So not too shabby for somebody that is not a carpenter. I'm gonna end off, uh, I think today's video on that note. Um, again, hopefully some of the education you guys have learned on the framing around the bulkheads and whatnot has helped and made sense. I will continue with a part two of framing the basement just because it's getting too long of a video and it's going to be too much to put into one video, okay? So if you guys liked it, please subscribe. Please comment below. Please give me a thumbs up or like. Until I see you guys next time, get in the gym, take care of yourselves, and freaking live your dream. I'll catch you next time.